Hello, welcome to video 4. What is the damage type class? I'm going to go ahead, let me just run through this quick little example, and you'll see how we're going to use the damage type, and then we'll see what it does and how we did it. So if I hit play, and we run through this, if I go into this little cube here, it's going to start decrementing my health by 3, and on the top left it says you're on fire. If we go into this one, we're going to start losing 2 for our damage, and it's going to say I am drowning. This last one is not hooked up. I'm going to actually hook it up for our example. So let's go ahead and see what this is, how it works. So a damage type is basically something that Epic has given to us in Unreal Engine 4 to allow us to quickly and easily identify the type of damage as well as hold specific things for that damage type and maybe do specific things due to that damage type and it's used in the applying and receiving events for damage. Now that sounds like a lot but that's why we're going to go over it. This video is going to cover damage type itself. There are separate videos on the applying and receiving damage types so you can go and check those out as well to see how those work. So damage type. It is a blueprint class. You will not find it in your default common. It's going to be down here under damage type. If we go ahead and create one and we'll name it to new DT for our example, we'll go and open it up. Now you're going to notice we do not have an event graph. There's no event graph because this doesn't tick and there's no native events that are run. Only custom and pass down functions and events and interfaces are part of this blueprint. Here are our details that are unique to this class. We have the damage types, rigid body types, and the destruction types. We'll start from the top. Basically your damage types are flags on the basic damage. So was this caused by the world? Check it if it's like lava or water or falling off for example. Scale momentum by mass. Is this going to scale the momentum of the pond that we're hitting based on the mass of the object that we are having damage from. Damage fall off, basically how quickly does the damage fall off? Is it evenly? It's a one, it's a linear fall off. If you have higher numbers, it's going to be a much larger damage fall off radius rather than a much smaller one. By default, you can leave these to the default values and they'll work perfectly acceptable for most of your damage types. This one right here is going to be applied to all of them. These ones down here are going to apply to your radial damage and your destructible damage, your impulse damage, the other damage causing events. How much of an impulse is applied to the actor that's damaged by this damage type? And that's your damage impulse. For example, if you hit them with a grenade, is it a little bit or a lot? Radial damage velocity change. When you do a radial damage, does it treat it as an impulse or a velocity change? Is it a sudden change like an explosion and things immediately fly out? Or is it an um, not sudden and it's a slow impulse kind of like an engine where you slowly ramp up to speed? It's not 0 60, it's 0 to 60. So this determines what it's going to use. Destruction. How much of an impulse should be applied to destructible meshes? This is different than the damage impulse. This is how much should be done if it's only a destructible mesh that you're hitting. And the last one is how much the damage is spread inside of your destructible mesh. Like I said earlier, you can leave as at default. These are tweakable settings that you can access when you're receiving the damage, which I'll show you how, as well as these are passed along automatically when you're doing the radial damage and things like that. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to use this. What I did was we're using our generic character. Now inside of our generic character, if I can find him, we previously used this. This was our receive any damage event. And all we were doing is taking the damage and updating our heads up interface. What we're going to do is we're now going to use the damage type, which is passed along, and we're going to do something with the damage type. So what I did is I have this here. What we're doing is we're taking our damage type and we're calling an event on the damage type called process damage. 
which takes in our damage and puts out our damage after we've already processed it, and then goes ahead and puts it on our screen. So what are we doing? What I did to make things easier on me, because I like using interfaces because they make things clean and simple. And if you notice up here, any interfaces you're using show up on your list so it's really easy to know what you want to do. So what I decided to do was I made a base damage type. This is our base damage right here. It is a damage type. It's called base damage, damage type. It holds our interface, process damage, and two variables, a multiplier and a message. Now what we're doing is taking the process damage event, taking our damage in and multiplying it by our multiplier, something super simple, and then printing out the string that we have set up and then passing back the, mul the modified multiplied damage. So for example, after this is our base, I've created a fire and a water type, which is pretty simple. Our fire, basically, if you notice here, it has our setup, which is our multiplier, which is three, and our message, which is you're on fire. And our water type is gonna be very simple, 2.0 for a multiplier, and I am drowning. So if we read through this, basically if it's fire, we're gonna multiply our damage by three, say you're on fire. If it's water, we're gonna multiply our damage by two and say you are drowning. And that's it, that's all we're doing. That's why when we walk through here, we see you're on fire and we lose three points of damage. And if we walk through here, you're, I am drowning and you lose two points of damage. So we're using the basic damage that's coming in from our event, which is one point of damage. And then we're modifying it based on the damage type. Now, the damage type itself is right here. Let's go ahead and pull this in. And I'm using this to process and pass along a message. I want to do something special inside of my damage type. But you don't have to. You could always do something like get class. This is going to get you the class of it, which in my case would be fire DT or water DT. And then you can go ahead and based on that class, you know, you can do something like, is this equal to fire? And then you can do an if branch and you could say, oh, if it's fire, and then you could handle it all in here. You don't have to handle anything inside of your damage type itself. You can handle it separately and just simply do an if check for each of your damage types, perfectly acceptable. You'll notice in here as well, what I talked about earlier, down here under variables, you have those built-in variables. So you can check and see, it was it caused by the world? What's the scale momentum? You can see the different bool variables we set up inside of our base damage class defaults right here. You can go ahead and you can see those by just simply going to the variable section in your blueprint layout. So that's how you can access those. Damage types are kind of special. They're they don't have to be used for anything. By default, if you don't pass along a damage type, it's going to pass along the a generic one, which has just these default values and nothing else. Perfectly acceptable. If you want to use it for special things like I did, this is an example of doing that. Let's say for a third example here, I want to make a healing one. Well, I can create a child blueprint. Let's call this one, let's call this one life. We'll call this a life damage type. If we edit this, well, here's a couple things you're going to find. Since this is a child blueprint, your first instinct may be to go over here to adjust your values. Let's say, for example, you've done this and you can't see your values. Since this is a child, you need to go to the eyeball in the variable section, show inherited variables, and this is going to go ahead and show you everything in your parent. So in here, we can go ahead and adjust our default values for our multiplier message. Or you can always go into class defaults and you can see them here. So let's actually set this up. Negative two multiplier and you feel better for the message. Negative, of course, when you're applying damage is basically going to apply heal. So let's go ahead. We'll go over to our life one right here. Find our damage type, life. Go ahead and hit save and we'll play it. Now if we walk over here, we're going to take some damage from drowning. If we walk into this one, we're now going to feel better and our health is going to go up. So there you go. Instead of having a big long chain after you took damage of 
is it equal to this type do this is it equal to this do this I went ahead and told the damage itself the damage type to handle those specific things now you may find out if you're in here you make you can go ahead and you can add in other events you can add in other interfaces you can add it in whatever you want it's again it's a parent child relationship and you're going to use the damage type of process now here's another example that's pretty cool this is the shooter game example that comes with unreal engine 4. now they have two different damage types instant and explosion and here's an example of using the damage type to not really change the type of damage but to hold information specific to the damage type so they have two extra sections in here they have effects and they have hud this basically holds the type of force feedback that's going to be applied to the player if they have a force feedback object and then they have the kill icon this is an icon that's specific to the type of damage that when the damage is applied to the character and when they died it sends it to a message log like a little display at the bottom left that says Bob killed Jones and sometimes it'll show you a little icon like a little rifle or a gun or a headshot icon well that's what this is for basically each of these damage types will hold its own unique icon and then when the event for the message is to be displayed it gets the damage type for the killing damage and then it gets the icon that's associated with it and it displays the icon so basically here's another way of using a damage type simply to hold unique information to the type of damage that was used they don't actually do anything with the damage they don't modify the damage it's just a placeholder it's a container to hold stuff so that's it that is what a damage type is for it's used to determine the type of damage and do things or hold things unique to that type of damage and it's completely optional if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below like i said earlier there are other videos that will be covering the these things right here which are events for applying damage and events for receiving damage so you can go ahead and look at those videos to see how the point damage radial damage and any damage nodes are handled